What's up? What's up, YouTube? So, I'm going to talk about this issue right here because it has become something. So, there's certain comic channels here on YouTube that brought this up. One in particular, which is Comic Tom. And they've done this to a few books, not just this one. They did it to Hulk 181. They've done it to Jimmy Olsen 134 and Forever People number one. And they've done it to this one as well. Now, I watch those shows, but just for information only, right? I've said that before. I've watched, I watch all these shows for information, and that's what you should do anyway. Don't be a follower. Just take in the info and see what you could do with it, right? So why do they bring this up? I guess probably just to make conversation, or maybe they have more issues of that than they do with this. I really don't know. But the comic community has decided through just time, really, that this is the book that they want to collect as far as um, a Gambit of first appearance now is this the gambit first appearance no and that's where the conversation comes into play but this is the most collectible one when you talk about cameos and full appearances though you know every everything gets convoluted because what is a cameo there's so many books so many books not just the three that i mentioned but so many books that um, you could see a cameo, but a cameo or a f say this is a cameo and that's a first appearance. But the collectors pretty much have decided which one is the one that they want to collect as an early appearance. And this, is, this happens to be the one that they want to collect. And how do you know that? It's because this is the one that they go after. This is the most expensive one, at least for now. You know, um, now I have this in a 9.8. I don't have this one graded. And when you talk about appearances, what is the first actual appearance? This is actually the first appearance. I've been trying to look for a date of when this book came out. Now, I was around... I was hitting the comic stands when this book came out, actually. But I don't remember which one came first. And even on CGC, and I've tried looking in different books for actual dates. Um, this is the Overstreet Price Guide. And this is um, the book that I always got uh, uh, referred to as just a standard catalog of comics. Now... On Overstreet, and Overstreet is going to be pretty much the one that you want to um, uh, find the actual date or uh, factual information on any comic, really. This came out 8 of 90, but when you go on annual 14, it just says 1990. I don't see any month there, and I can't find a month so far anywhere so i have to take the overstreet as far as uh you know this one came out first and they do mention it here first appearance of gambit and they call it a minor appearance five pages and that's where the conversation comes in right it's uh is this the first appearance and it is so i'm gonna be try to be really careful because this is actually going out to cgc you see him first here, very first page, right? And we go to page 15. Uh, see, this is what I hate. You actually see him in different pages here. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, here, page 15, he's having a conversation with Storm here, and Storm names him by name as well, 
See? A man who dresses as you do and calls himself Gambit. And you see him in the next page as well. You see him actually trying to take on Cable. And then you see him with the rest of the group right here. So, as far as first appearances, yeah, this would be his first appearance. But, um, people have been drawn more to this book because of the cover. Now, we've, we've discussed different books before uh, where the cover becomes a collecting point, right? This is one of them. Um, and Hulk 181. This... It's a pretty ugly cover. It's awful. It's an awful cover. I don't even know why they chose this as a cover, but it's not a good cover. And this is Hulk 180. And you see a full cameo of Wolverine on the last page. Right? Um, believe it or not, I had this in an 8.0. And I sold it for 50 bucks at the turn of the century. When I... Uh, when I bought the House of Secrets 9.0, uh, the guy also gave me this book in an 8.0 as uh, um, it, it was free with, with that purchase. And I ended up selling it because it wasn't going for much, that book. And I hated the cover. So I just didn't want to keep it. And I sold it for 50 bucks and 8.0 on that. Look at that. Stupid, right? Yeah, one of my dumbest. Now, meanwhile, I ended up buying this from Comically Flawed for uh, $405, which is a great price, by the way. This is one of the books that um, I got in a YouTube auction. Uh, you can get some really, really good prices there. But, um, yeah, I ended up getting it back and paying, uh, you know, you know, buy buy high sell low right yeah and i'm talking about investing in comics go figure all right so here x-men 266 why is this one the one that people want to go after much like uh the hulk right 181 it's just a great cover it's uh, one of the best covers wolverine covers of all time if not the best right but um it's just a great cover. He's on the front cover, and people have dr are drawn to that book. He's a, he's got a full story in that book, and this right here. Um, a lot of people think that this is Jim Lee. It does look like Jim Lee. This is actually Andy Kubert that does this cover. Tremendous cover. This yeah sure. This is a great cover. R. Adams does it right, and R. Adams is no uh, he's no slouch when it comes to drawing. But that is not this right um so that's why people are drawn to this uh the most it's up to you ultimately what you want to collect but um when it comes to like a book like this if you're going to collect this book uh i would definitely go after in, in any of the books really i would go after the um newsstand because we've discussed this is a book from 1990 and the newsstand is probably going to be 10% of what the um, direct edition is. So when you go to circulation numbers, that's where you actually see a, a big difference. So for 266, circulation on 266, two different distributors, um, you have a half a million copies printed of this book right when you go to annual 14 i only have one circulation number which is 76200 what i can tell you though is that at least uh back in the day and i think you see it now as well right um annuals were less printed much less printed than the regular edition i do remember that uh, from from looking in a newsstand 
So I will tend to uh, to think that that number is probably correct. Um, so if there's, let's say, uh, even a 20% less, I can probably buy that, that there's 20% less of these than there are of these. But this one's the prettier cover. I would go after the new stand, but to go after the new stand for this one here, it's getting really, really pricey, big time, big time with with great reason now as far as cgc numbers i wrote them down for 266 and 9.8 there's 2972 for the annual 14 there's 618 and 9.8 and um you see actually 9.6 is 4128 2500 and 9.4 is 1456 9.2 as far as 9.8 uh, percentages, 21% out of over 14,000 that are graded, it's going to be around 21% of them that are 9.8, and that's probably because there's so many of them, right? There's um, half a million of these, you know. Uh, percentages for annual 14, you're looking at 618 uh, of almost 2,000 that are graded. It's around 30 percent now this is a square bound oh and if you see right there's only 618 which is it's not that bad for a 1990s book in 9.8 463 9.6 is 289 of 9.4s and 176 of 9.2s i mean you could see that even on 266 even if you take the 9.2s uh, they're going to outnumber uh, almost the entire 9.2 to 9.8 on the X-Men 14, right? And those are numbers, right? And I like to give numbers here so that it just gives you ideas on what you can do, right? Um, but the square bound, I think that that 30%, this, these books are going to be, be uh, submitted Anybody that has this book is probably going to be submitting it to CGC because of the conversation started by uh, Comic Tom and some and some of the other channels. But that percentage is probably going to go down because it's a square bound book, and as we all know, square bounds tend to have a lot more defects than the regular covers. And you see this right here. This book is actually in pretty nice condition, except for the square bound spine, right? It's like it's not um, it's not centered. It's uh, bent, right? And even though I'm gonna probably have it pressed, I don't think that they're gonna be able to do much with it. So. This will still be in the nines, I'm sure, but it's not going to be a 9.8. I do have other ones over there that I'm going to be sending out. Another one, and I have another one coming that I'm going to be sending out. But, like I said, the newsstand is the one that you guys want to have. Now, like I said about those shows, they tried doing this with Hulk 180 and Hulk 181. And, you know, people, e even me, I mean, I went out and I purchased it back again. But the truth is, I purchased it because I know that once Wolverine comes out, it's going to go up even more. And I am going to sell this. I'm going to keep my, my 181s. Uh, but this one is going to be uh, sold. So this is like a hold for me. It's not something that I'm going to keep in my collection. Um this one, because there's so many of them out there, so many 9.8s, 3,000 9.8s in these guys. It's not a rare book at all, unless you have the newsstand. But it's not a rare book at all. And yes, it's arguably the second most popular X-Men, right? Wolverine is the most popular. I mean, Wolverine is probably arguably the second i would say definitely top five character in marvel comics to me i think he's number two behind 
this guy right here is getting his costume ripped open, right? Spider-Man is without a shadow of a doubt Marvel's uh, marquee character. And he might just be the marquee character in all of comics. I think he's overtaken Superman and Batman in that respect. And I do believe that he's, he's actually done that over the past two decades. Um, and that's a different situation though, guys. But anyway, Gambit, as far as X-Men, I think um, that guy right there is probably the second most popular X-Men. And when he makes his um, debut, uh, I think these books are still going to take off. Um, but the one that has the most upside, I guess, at least right now because of price, is this book. Especially if you have it in, in, uh, in great condition. Does it piss me off? Yeah, I guess just a little bit, guys. I mean, it, it, it does kind of like... Because it, it, it's almost like people are tampering with first appearances. Uh, and like I said, they tried to do it with um, Jimmy Olsen 134 and Forever People. I mean, Jimmy Olsen 134 is a Neil Adams cover. Great, great looking cover with great colors. Forever People number one. Yeah, uh, Dark Side's only in one panel. But as we discussed before, um, there's a an ad for Forever People number one and New Gods number one in uh, Jimmy Olsen 134. And the cover, you can't compare the covers. You know, Forever People number one is, is almost as bad as cover. And you know what? It's probably a worse cover than this cover. It's, it's just ugly. That is an ugly, ugly cover. Sure, Dark Side's in there more, but it's an ugly cover. Even though it's Jack Kirby, it's a collaboration between him and Coletta. Um, but um, but I think uh, Jimmy Olsen, I mean, without a doubt, is that's that's the one that you really want to have. Um, in my opinion, in my opinion, again, you take everything. You got to take everything. Don't take everything to heart process the information for yourself and then make a decision um but anyway that's this is just something i wanted to talk about uh and that's um uh, that's pretty much it guys later